After 30 days of travel by sea and land, the missionaries arrived in Bombay, India, about July 1901. 27-year-old Anna Knight had become the first black SDA missionary. A 36-hour train journey brought them to Calcutta, where Anna's friend, Donna Humphrey, stayed to work in the sanitarium. Anna, however, was soon called to Karmatar to help Miss S. E. Whitus. There you are, Mrs. Banerjee. The abscess is drained and bandaged. Take these pills three times a day to keep the infection from returning. Thank you, Mem Saib Knight. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are all the patients gone, Sister Whitus? Yes. I've closed up, Sister Knight. I was wondering. So many of our patients speak English. Why is that? Well, with the British ruling India, anyone who wants to get a good job has to speak English. Besides, there are so many languages here, it's sometimes easier for the Indians to talk to each other in English. That's interesting. There's so much to learn here and, and so much to do. <laughs> there certainly is, and I'm glad you came to help. How are you feeling? Quite well now, thank you. That was quite a case of heat prostration you suffered while I was in Calcutta. You were unconscious for 36 hours. If it weren't for Parvati and Tuppybai cooling you with water, you might have died before I returned. They're good girls, but I'm embarrassed it was my own fault. I got overheated while helping the mission boys plow the garden. Then I took a bath and ate at once. I should have rested a while before eating. Of course, you'd never think of resting. As if lancing boils and pulling teeth aren't enough, you spend your spare time keeping the accounts and teaching classes in Bible and English, not to mention overseeing the garden. It's all in the Lord's service, and I'm used to hard work. Ah, just wait till the hot season comes. What happens then? <laughs> Actually, work here at the mission slacks off. Some of us do field work in the large cities, selling books and periodicals. The Oriental Watchman and London Good Health are monthly papers that supplement the books. Hmm, that sounds interesting. It's the kind of work I've never done before. When the hot weather came, Anna and Donna Humphrey were sent to sell books to English-speaking Europeans and Indians. They also conducted cooking schools and taught simple treatments for the sick. After working successfully, in Allahabad, they were sent on to Simla in the hills, where officials and their families spent the hot weather. But at the railroad station, the agent told them the train went only as far as Kalka. But if the train doesn't go to Simla, how do we get there? By, uh, by Tonga, Miss Knight, like that one right outside. That? Mm-hmm. That's just two wheels with a board across the axle. But it has footrests. The train would take only an hour from Calca to Simla. Horses pulling a, a tonga will take all day. I guess we'll plan an extra day of travel. I have a feeling I'm going to become very used to tongas. The work in Simla was also blessed. After the hot season, the two friends returned to Calcutta, where Donna went back to her tasks in the sanitarium and Anna continued to sell books and do Bible work. They expected to labor in India until the Lord's return. So Anna was unprepared for Donna's sudden illness and death. Though grief-stricken, Anna threw herself into her work. Sometime later, she received a different kind of bad news from home. Here's your mail, Sister Knight. Thank you, Sister Shaw. Now, don't you come from Soso, Mississippi? Actually, I'm from Gatano, but Soso is another town nearby. Ah, the, that must be what this means, then, this report in the review. Mission school at Soso burned. Teachers driven away. Oh, no. My friend Julia Atwood and her husband Parker took over the school when I left. Oh. That must be what these letters are about. A drunken mob set their home on fire, then shot at them. Julia and her husband escaped by lying flat on the floor. Oh. Then they ran to my mother's house for shelter, and the mob burned the school. Oh, my dear. I'm so sorry. 
My family begs me to come back, but what can I do? It'll be years before I qualify for furlough. On the other hand, I came here only on condition that someone take my place back home. What'll you do then? I'll write to the general conference and ask them to send someone else to Mississippi. Anna Knight and Sister Whitus were able to save a woman near death from typhoid malaria fever. And as a result, several schools and churches were raised up in the district. Over the next few years, Anna traveled as a literature evangelist throughout East India. She suffered sunstroke escaped death at the hands of thuggy cultists, and was even fed by an angel. But always she thought about the need in Mississippi. Oh, no. Bad news, Sister Knight? Yes, Sister Whitus. It's from my younger sister, Grace. No one's been sent to carry on my work back home. Converts are slipping back into the old ways. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. I must go home. I'll write to the general conference and ask for a furlough right away. On November 8, 1907, Anna Knight reached home with every intention of returning to India in a couple of years. She reestablished her school and Sunday schools, and before long, she began to reap her harvest of souls. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Anna. Go ahead, Miss Knight. Ask her. Anna, we'd like to have a word with you before Sunday school starts. Why, certainly, Mama. What's on your mind? Well, we know how you've been having your Sabbath school on Saturday, all by yourself these past months. And, uh, we, well, we figure we might as well meet with you on Saturday and not bother with Sunday school no more. You want to come to Sabbath school? Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Sabbath school. That's what we want. All right. Next week, we'll start Sabbath school. Six months later, nine Sabbath school members were baptized, including Anna's mother and six other relatives. After that, the conference president asked Anna to visit other companies and churches to help the other workers. In 1909, when her two-year furlough was almost up, 35-year-old Anna Knight received an unexpected invitation from Brother Dowsett to work for the Southeastern Union Conference. I'm glad you decided to accept our call to Atlanta, Sister Knight. We need a medical matron for the sanitarium we hope to establish here. It wasn't an easy decision, Brother Dowsett. But the brethren at the General Conference office said it would be easier to fill my place in India than to find trained people to work here. I see. And uh, were you able to make satisfactory arrangements for your school in Mississippi? Oh, yes. My younger sister Grace has taken over. She's only 18, but she'll do a good job. I trained her myself, expecting her to take over when I returned to India. I'm glad. Well, let's get out to the sanitarium. I'm afraid it's nothing more than an unfurnished house at the moment. There's a lot of hard work ahead. Hard work is what I know best, Brother Dowsett. When neighbors persuaded the mayor to close the sanitarium, Miss Anna Knight operated a private treatment room at home. She also took over the Bible instructor's work for African Americans, lectured in several black colleges, and served as chairman of the school board. She remained in Atlanta until the beginning of World War I. And we have agreed that we need a home missionary secretary to visit churches, hold institutes, organize bands for missionary work, and teach home nursing classes. I will entertain nominations. Yes, Brother Manns. I nominate Sister Anna Knight. In the last five years, she's done great work in Atlanta. She's organized a YWCA that brought together Adventists, Methodists, and Baptists, and won friends for the cause. 
Her work has been largely responsible for removing prejudice against Adventists in this city. I second the nomination. The Southeastern Union Conference couldn't choose a better home missionary secretary. All in favor of Sister Anne and I, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. It's unanimous. For many years, Miss Anna Knight helped to organize the educational work in the South. She traveled almost constantly, but kept her headquarters at Oakwood College, where she was a member of the board. By the time black American conferences were organized in 1945, Anna Knight had seen her little school in Mississippi grow to 34 church schools, including four junior academies with 54 teachers. In 1952, at the age of 78, she gave a summary of some of her work. Since 1911, I have held 9,388 meetings and have made 11,744 missionary visits. My work required the writing of 48,918 letters and I have traveled 554,439 miles. This does not include India. Anna Knight, education pioneer and the first African-American missionary to India, died in 1972 at the age of 98. The elementary school at Oakwood, where student teachers train, is named in her honor. <laughs> 